All right, I hope you're having fun while the whole world is shut down. I know I am. So we're going to have a little educational entertainment today. Um, we're going to be writing a little shell script using this little tool. Now, I should say, on GitHub right now, there are a whole bunch of coronavirus tracker uh, repositories out there that are going viral. So I've picked one of them, and here's what I want to do. I want to make a little script. Uh, this, this interface here, I should say, gives you all this data about coronavirus. I want to make a little script that gives me just information about my local, uh, you know, how many coronavirus cases are near me in my state. Uh, and actually, I'd like to be able to put it in my status bar, just because why not? Just as an example, something we can do. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So here is a nice, the reason I chose this repository to work with, uh, there are many of them. Um, it has a bunch of different data, but very nicely, it has a CURL interface, and that is a gold mine if you are using shell scripting to get what you want. So to be clear, they have a website here that lists out all the data that you can look at the data on, uh, you know, using this website. Now, of course, it's not going to render in your browser very well because you're really supposed to use it with CURL. So let's actually do that. Let's go. Uh, let's go to another uh, workspace, and we will see URL that website. And uh, if we do that, you see that we have this big output. It is downloaded to our command line, and we have, uh, you know, the, the same thing we were just looking at. Uh, in addition, this particular this particular source, you can give it uh, country codes. So, for example, if um, you know they have the example of Italy or the U.S. or U.K. or something like that, so we can do this. We can say, let's look at the regions of Italy, and it will. Okay, well that one doesn't actually have any regions, but whatever. Uh, let's go to uh, U.S. and it will print out all the American states. Very nice. Okay. So we get all this data, and in my case, now I'm going to make it for my situation. Obviously, you probably live in a different place than me, uh, but I live in Florida. So uh, what I want to do is I want to make a little uh, status bar thing just for Florida. Maybe I'll, I mean, I could add all other places to the to the uh, same thing, but we'll just do it that way. Um, so first off, so we don't have to re-download this over and over again. Actually, I'll, I'll plan it out. I already have it in my head how it's going to work out, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. Uh, so the status bar script, whether you use it in a status bar or not, uh, I want it to check, I, I want it to download every day the newest coronavirus status uh, and then display it whenever the script is run. Now first we'll just work on displaying it. So I'm just going to pre-download this. I'm going to pre-download this file and I'm going to put it in, let's say, uh, cache uh, corona, okay? Just so it's out of my home directory because I don't like stuff in my home directory. It's what a big pain. Uh, so now we can just run, you know, we can just cat out cache corona or grep it directly or something like that. Um, so now we can see what it's looking like. So let's uh, grep the sequence Florida out of here. So here's what I want. Uh, actually, let's see. I should probably actually see uh, what uh, column each one of them is. So I'm going to grep out. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to see the line that says state, and I also want to see the line that says Florida. Because the line that says state lists out, uh, you know, what the names of all the columns are. Okay, I'll need that for now. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have, I'm going to have it list the confirmed cases, and then maybe in uh, parentheses or something, the daily change. And then I'll have it list the mortality. Maybe I'll have a little emoji skull next to that. Or, or no, the uh, deaths, and then the mortality rate maybe in parentheses or something. Okay, so that's where I'll, where I'll start. So I'll start by actually making this, well, let, let's make a proper script for this. Let's not just do it in the command line. So let's say Corona, it's gonna be a shell script. Okay, um, so we are gonna say this, we're gonna say grep, uh, the sequence of state and the sequence of Florida. I don't know why I don't just copy this over out of the cache file of Corona. Okay, so that's where, we're, we'll, where we will start. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this as executable if I can spell it right. Sure, mod Corona. Okay. Um, so now if we run Corona, this is in my path, it will print out the things we uh, just talked about, right? Uh, so now we can modify this script and let's add some stuff to it. So first off, I want to simplify this output because it's really, it, it actually would be hard to manipulate with command line utilities because there's a lot of white space here. I want to get rid of all the white space and we'll use sed for that. Okay, we'll say this, we'll say a sed replace command and we're going to replace, um, I, I'm putting this on multiple lines. You can probably, well, actually we'll put it on one line. I won't confuse people too much. Let's say I'll replace... 
uh, uh, slash s means any white space, and if I put uh, the asterisk, that means any amount of white space. Replace that with nothing. Let's just get rid of that. And uh, so if I run that, now it's going to be all sort of mashed together, and this is actually better for us. Uh, I'll also, looks like there's a weird character at the end. I don't even know how to type this thing, so I'm going to copy it over. And I want to get rid of this. So I'll have said also run a command. We'll say whenever you find this character, just delete it. Okay. So this says specifically substitute this character with the character in between these two slashes, with the, which is nothing. Okay. Um, so now that thing has been deleted. And it's also this character here. It looks like a pipe. I don't think it is a pipe. Um, it's something a little bigger. I think it's like the box character. Let's replace that with a semicolon because that's easier to manipulate. Okay, just let's just get rid of all the ugly characters. Okay, so now we have this. Now you might say, okay, how is this better? It's a little less readable to a human. It is less readable to a human, but it, but it's more readable to shell commands. So here's what I want. I want to cut out certain columns of data, and I can you I can do that with cut, uh, the command cut. So let's go over to our script. And I'm going to make a new line, and I'm going to say cut, and I'm going to first set a delimiter, and I'm going to say our delimiter is the semicolon, all right? Meaning the thing that divides all the columns is the semicolon. So now I can say something like, okay, well, show me what the second column is, okay? So if I run that, it's going to show just the second column. Or if I show, um, you know, the fourth column, right? Uh, oops, don't know why I entered on that. Uh, it'll show the fourth column or something like that. Um, so that's a pretty nice thing to do. Actually, now that I think about it, we can make a little revision here that'll make things uh, more efficient. Now, I was going to pipe cut into awk, and awk will give you the ability to format it, you know, put parentheses around things, put uh, icons, emojis on things, and print it out in whatever order you want. But you know what? We could actually just omit the cut because awk can do the same thing that cut does. So as an example, this line here, we could change this to the following. Awk, uh, let's say, using the delimiter, capital F is their delimiter uh, thingy, uh, and instead say print um, two and four, and that should actually be exactly the same as cutting. Okay, so if we run that, uh, missed something here, let's see, unterminated, oh yeah, did not in that quote there. Uh, so that should be basically the same, and of course they don't add the delimiter in between them, but we actually prefer that. We don't want the semicolons in our final answer. Um, so we can start messing with this. So just to be clear, let's double check what our categories are again. Okay, so we have confirm cases, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's get all the ones that we actually want, okay? So we're going to want confirmed cases, and that is one, two, three. So that's column three. And let's say... Uh, we want the daily change in parentheses right after that. So that is going to be confirmed as three. Uh, the day one is what we want here. So let's say uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's going to be nine. Let's just check that that is right. Okay, so let's put it in a parenthesis. So how you do that, you can just arbitrarily put strings into awk and it will uh, insert them. So we can put an open parentheses, I'm putting a space before it, and a closed parentheses right after it. So now that is gonna have, uh, now first off this line up here, we only just have this line as uh, reminding us what each of the uh, columns are. We'll get rid of it in a second by uh, getting rid of state from grep, okay? Uh, but we now have only this stuff here. Let's add some more stuff in. Now I said I wanted the mortality rates, and that's gonna be, let's see, if one day is nine, then mortality is going to be seven. Actually, we want death rates too, so that's going to be five. So I'm going to put in after this, I'll say uh, five and seven. Okay, Just printing out our columns and let's put spaces and stuff between them. Let's say our death rate, let's put the, uh, let's put a little uh, skull in front of it so it looks uh, deadly, okay? And uh, let's put, um, the uh, mortality rate in parentheses. Okay, so we're gonna put that in parentheses, open parentheses, close parentheses. Actually, we'll put a little percentage sign. Okay, so now if you look at this, okay, so we got our death rate, we got our deaths in Florida, we have our mortality rate in Florida, we have our confirmed cases, and we have the daily change. Actually, 
Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, actually, let's put another emo let's put another emoji in because why not? Let's say the um, isn't there like a medical face with a medical mask? There it is. So let's put that in front of the uh, no at the very beginning. Okay. So now we'll have something like this. Okay. Now I'm gonna go up. I think we're about done. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna get rid of this line where I'm grepping out, where I'm searching for the line that says state. Because the only reason we're doing that is just so we have the names of our columns. So now if I run it, this is all I'm gonna have. Great. So that's basically what I want. So this is our cases in Florida, the increase and the death and the mortality rate. So now this is gonna be specific to my setup, but I'm going to integrate it uh, into my status bar and now again I haven't added the ability to automatically update the script yet But I'm gonna add it to my status bar that happens to be in DWM blocks uh, I don't know if anyone uses my dot files you can uh, do it this way, but otherwise let's see I'm gonna have oops. I'm gonna have the uh, I'll just copy one of these. I'll say it is what did I name the file just corona Okay, and I'm gonna give the update number to 14. All right, if you don't know what that is, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna run that, and I'm going to uh, kill my status bar and start it back up and see what it looks like. Um, okay, wait a second probably. It'll show up. Okay, there it is, look at that. So there we have our little status bar thing showing how many our coronavirus you know, coronavirus uh, information. So the last thing I want to do is obviously we just manually downloaded the data to this place right here, cache corona. But I want to put in a check basically that says whenever the script runs, let's say that it, um, uh, it checks to see if we have an update from today, checks to see if this file, to be clear, this file, uh, cache, cor or yeah, cache corona, it's gonna have metadata associated with it that say, oh, I was updated at this date. Okay, so as an example, we can look at that data by using the stat command. Uh, we can say, I guess, stat, uh, I think it's y, no, stat c, y, that should give me the, yes, all the information about when this file was updated. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out uh, the first, uh, column here, so that's gonna be uh, this. So we said our delimiter is the space, uh, and we're gonna cut out our first column, format the first column. So now we have the exact date that this file was uh, opened. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna have a little test. I'm gonna do have this in my script. I'm gonna say, um, uh, well, well, I'll just write out what I have so far. I'm gonna check to see if this date is equal to the actual uh, date on your computer and if it is not it is going to up it's going to re-download the original file Okay, so we're going to stat this we're going to get the date and we're going to say if What that is equal to is equal to the following um, I actually had to write down a date command because I know I'd use it because I always forget date syntax But here's what it looks like. It is going to be date um, Let's see plus percent sign Y for year and then month and then day. Okay, so that is that should be, let's just test it just in case, uh, that should be our date. Uh, I put an equal sign in there, that was stupid. But uh, So this will print out our actual date. So anyway, all this does say is we're gonna check, we're gonna see if these two are equal. Is the data of this file's update equal to the date of the actual, uh, you know, coronavirus, um, or the actual date that it is on your computer, actually. All right, so now we have the bare bones of a little check. So now we just need to go back. Let's find our command. Where is corona stats? Okay, so there is the original command that we need to run. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna put it in here. And here's what I'm gonna say. If, the date of the file is not equal to the current date. I put a exclamation point in there, so it's not. Here's what I'm gonna tell you to do. Do the following. C-U-R-L that thingy, and I'm gonna have it C-U-R-L silently, and put it in cache corona, okay? All right, so let's be clear about what this is. Now this is just one line, well, okay, now it's one line, but 
very terse code, but to be, be clear, all this says is check to see if this file is equal to your current date. Uh, and if it's not, um, download this, okay, and put it there. Make it, uh, make, make it current, make sure it's always updated. So if we run this command multiple times, let's say um, I go out here and I just run Corona, and it's gonna show the output immediately because it's gonna check to see if the, this is equal, it's gonna skip that statement, and it's going to go and print out um, you know, the information it's supposed to. But let's say we delete the Corona uh, data file, okay? Then if we run this, it's gonna, it's gonna give a little error and wait a little bit because it's downloading, and it's gonna print out the information. Actually, let's suppress that error because I don't even like that. I don't wanna see that. I just want it to give a little bit of time and then show uh, the answer. So let's cut, uh, let's say, uh, let's pipe all of the potential error from this to dev null. Okay, now let's double check that. So I'm gonna re-delete our cache file. I'm gonna run Corona, oops, I need to, no, okay. I don't need to uh, send that to dev null. I need to send the stat command to dev null. Silly, silly me, okay. Now we'll check it, okay, remove the cache run Corona. There it is. All right. So the, you saw there was a brief pause. That was it downloading. Uh, and then it immediately showed the information. And if we rerun it any time today, as long as the date is the same, it's going to keep displaying that. Now, tomorrow when I run this, it is going to re-download the information. So when I log on to my computer and my status bar runs, that uh, the module will be updated. Actually, maybe I should, for DWN blocks user, maybe users, maybe I should just add uh, automatically updating time to it. But uh, anyway, all right, so that's about it. So just uh, summing up everything, all, we did, all we've been doing is we've been using basic commands like grep and sed and awk and stuff like that, that to manipulate data. But we've turned a nice little data interface like this into something you could use in a little script or a status bar. And we have a nice little way of it updating, a simple check just so you don't have to worry about it. So anyway, that's about it. Another little long-winded video about a, a script tutorial, but I'm sure this will be useful to someone. So enjoy it. See you guys. Prepare for the next happening, and I'll see you guys next time.